Uh, we just put out a reel that we partnered with Bumble on. It was to us our first time really doing something as a production company. We did the thing. Yes. We did the thing. It was an incredible experience. I hope for more. Um, and I think it was a great step. We should record this. It is recording. You think I don't do this? You don't think I do this? Okay. I do this. Okay. What's up, Manaspi? <clears throat> Love the necklace. Thank you. This is a vibrator. Durr. <clears throat> it's the Crave necklace. Hold this. Why don't you prop it? Why don't you prop it? I ain't gonna prop it. But now that the microphone is dragging down my t-shirt. Well, okay. Why did you put the microphone like that? Well, how should it be? Like this. It looks ugly. Prop me up, prop me up. Look what we did. We. Oui. You know what Jared just said? We. Oui. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. The all-in-one platform to build your dream website. With Squarespace, design is a breeze. Whether you're starting a passion project or launching a business, Squarespace empowers you to create a stunning online presence. Try it out yourself and go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash shambooty to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Now enjoy the video. Uh, all right, how are you gonna start this? We did it! Well, we still have some more work to go, but we- Zip it. <laughs> Zip it, we did it. Take a moment. This is huge. Yeah. We went from being talent who can produce content yeah. to producers who have talent. Yeah. Who can be talent. Who can be talent. And don't necessarily have to be. No, it was great because I think in the beginning of the year, uh, we set an intention to really own shared entertainment as a production house and really focused in on how do we create content that not only separates us from other people who are making content, but how do we compete with industry standard content makers or production houses? Um, and so, you know, I think we were leveling up incrementally. And then this was like the first big test on if we can show up as a production house and not just talent. I'm giving it a big like moment. I think we should actually go out for dinner and celebrate today. I'm giving it a big moment because we made a video last year that was titled, We Thought We Were Ready. And yeah. we got an opportunity to do a big job that again was like looking at us like producers who can be talent. And we were like, yo, we can do this. And then we did it and we were like, nah, no, we can't. Like, we, we failed. We did fail. We didn't, I mean, we delivered, but we didn't deliver with a T. You know what I'm saying? It just was like, we what got- What does that mean? What are, you, what are you talking about? What does that mean? We delivered, but we didn't deliver it. You know what I mean? Oh. We didn't deliver oh. it. We delivered with a T on this Bumble one. We delivered with a T on the Skin Project one. Yeah. We're about to deliver with a T on this prep one. Yeah. Like having a vision and executing it beautifully and cinematically as well as strong storytelling, as well as a personal passion and a connection to it. Like, I guess being able to really bring your all to something. Yeah, well, I know, you know, it's funny you bring up the last job that we did. Um, but I remember after we completed the job and I went to a party and I saw the person who yes. gave us the job at the party. And, What's you know, up, Jasmine? <laughs> What's up? We've seen Jasmine multiple times out since then. She knows what it is. I saw her at this party and uh, we were, she was just having small talk with me. And I was like, hey, I just want to say... Sorry, <laughs> we did not deliver on this project. It was very, very poorly done. Um, and we- But still the best we could do. I think that's important to know because it's not like we didn't try our hardest. Yeah, we tried. We really did try. But that's what makes it worse. It makes it better to me. No, it makes it worse because a good- In the comment section below, is that better or worse? It's worse because in, like, here's the thing, what that project showed me at least, was that you cannot let your ego get in the way of the content. And I felt like we overestimated our abilities and we didn't think about, you know, hey, maybe we're not the greatest in this department, we should hire 
or bring on somebody who does this. And we just focus on the things that we're great at. Um, and we didn't do that. We were like, no, we could do it all. And we went to the project and dropped the ball on all fields because we were juggling way too many hats for this type of project. I think I hear what you're saying. I receive what you're saying. I think a lot of what you're saying is very true. Yeah. I gave ourselves grace because the timeline was very short. Yes. So to like, and I also very much hear you on the arrogance of us being like we could do this while also acknowledging that why would we think any other way? Because everything we've ever done before has been just you and me. And that yeah. person or that company hired us based on what we had done in the past, which was just you and me. Yeah. So it's kind of natural of us to be like, oh, yeah, we've always done that. But we didn't take into account yet yeah, when you're trying to level things up when you're making a multi segmented show, there has to be continuity. There's just there was a lot of stuff that we should have done better. Not to dwell on the past, though, but I do think that we learned from our mistakes. Um, and I think that we kept the same effort, but we also empowered other people to help us with our vision. And that's been the difference maker. Yeah, 100%. I mean, this is the first time that I think we stepped onto a set with that many people that we were um, leading. That was cool. Yeah. And, 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 you know, we had at least 15 people people helping us make this thing and that in itself was a little daunting um you know it was scary because you have a team of people looking to you to figure out how do we get whatever it is that we're trying to accomplish um which i was grateful for because it actually showed that oh wait i actually do know what i'm talking about in a lot of different departments in the work that we do and i was able to communicate with the gaffer team i was able to communicate with you know um the camera operators i was able to communicate with the client i was able to communicate with so many different levels and i'm the one editing it so i felt like i was able to talk to the camera operators in a way of like i need you to shoot this specific thing so that i can chop this this way um which was a was a I, it felt good being able to step onto a set and know every department because of the work that we've done in the past um, you know, the one thing that I think that I always fall short on, which you came in and lifted, was being able to talk to the cast. I don't have a lot of experience in leading a cast. I have a lot of experience in leading uh, production, but not necessarily cast, where I think that's what makes us a great team, because you can come in and be, you know, uh, get everybody to the level that we need to get them to, to perform. And then I could just focus on the crew to get them to the level we need them to so we can perform. And I think that's what makes shared entertainment uh, different than a lot of other productions. I feel incredibly lucky that you're so good at your job because you make it easy for me to shoot you. You're gonna make sure that all I have to focus is making the shot beautiful, which makes my job easy, where I think other productions, they have to go onto set and like pull this talent to do the things that they want them to do. I think you and I, because we're married and because we're uh, a couple, we have the same vision a lot of times when it comes to the content, so we can kind of talk to each other telepathically to get what we need to get, you know? I love being around you. I love doing things with you. I love hanging with you. I love seeing you expand. I also love the relationship that we have of it being intimate because mm -hmm. we had two days on the set. After day one, I gave you a note, and day two, I saw you bring that to life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and probably saying vice versa. You could tell me something in real time and you know how to talk to me to get the best out of me. I know how to talk to you to get the best out of you. And you know when I critique you, it's with your highest potential in mind. Yeah. And vice versa. And like that's a very special thing that we have worked on. And it's not something that I say it has been automatic at all. Mm -hmm. Like. I watched this clip where this husband and wife, Sterling and Ryan, were talking about working on a podcast together. And they had one season. And one person was like, I like it. <laughs> the other person was like, I don't know how to feel about that. And that's very normal. Like, it took us a long time to develop this kind of relationship and rapport. And it also took a lot of confidence building on my end and on your end, where you know distinctly what you're great at and you know that I know that. Mm. And I don't step on your toes, you don't step on mine. And I talked about this in another video of us working parallel versus cooperatively. Mm -hmm. And you could interpret that a lot of different ways, but I think that just means like, we come together, we bring our unique bests, we know what the shared vision is, pun intended, um, and then we don't step on each other's jurisdictions or areas, yeah. and we know we don't need to. Sometimes I, I wake up and I'm like so grateful and like, 
this is exactly what I wanted out of working with the, with each other was having that overlap of things that I care about and things that you care about kind of running into each other. Um, and this project that we worked on, I think, exemplifies that, plus the skin and plus the things that we're working on moving forward, um, exemplifies that in a way that is so um, easy to understand, I think, from the outside and from us internally. Uh, it caused a lot of... Because I think in the past, when we first started working, um, the idea was editor, right? And then like, then you would be the content creator and then I'm the editor, which I don't think that aligned perfectly um, because I feel like as I got into the space of you know filming, I realized the editing portion is not the portion that I get the most joy from. And the portion that I get the most joy from is actually being on the field and shooting. Um, and so now I think in the space that we are in, we're able to create from a place that is things that you like and then things that I like. You know, I went on set that day and the gaffing team was setting up um, before you had arrived. And I saw it and I was like, oh, Shan's not going to like this. We got to switch it up. Um, and so I had to like show them where I wanted the light to go and where I wanted you to be at and how I wanted everybody else to be positioned. And I don't think that, of course you can grow with somebody and learn that part, but I don't think that other people would have that know you intimately on how you like your stuff and how you want it to be um, uh, if it wasn't for our intimate relationship. Yeah, I think that that's like a, a regret of mine. You shot your short film and I didn't come that day. I helped you with the scripting of yeah. it. Obviously I helped you pre-produce it and then um, I tried to be of help remotely that day mm. by managing craft services etc but I should have just been there yeah and when I watched it back I knew what I could do that only I would yeah. notice yeah and I know how that would have benefited you and what matters to you yeah and so you know like even yesterday we did the for to put it on Instagram oh know? yes yeah and I'm gonna put my touch on it yes because <laughs> I wouldn't have done that. You wouldn't have done that. No. But did it work? I think so. Right. I think it it, it it limited people from sharing it. I don't know if they wanted that okay. to come off the top. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> that's totally fair. I can see. I can see that. Um, For reference, this is what she did to the video. You want to see what I'm doing? Just cleaning the cup, you nasty. But now that I got your attention, rotate your phone. Well, I feel ashamed. <laughs> no, don't feel ashamed. Don't feel ashamed because this is the thing. This is this is this is where I think we work perfectly. I am such a rebellious. I have a rebellious nature when it comes to algorithms and playing that game. Um, and you understand it really well. And because I buck against it, and you understand it really well, there is a, a marriage that happens that we can kind of blend together. Sometimes I wish I fought, I fought you harder, like with the last thing that we did, the skin thing. I wish I was just like, no, Shane, just let the content speak. But I also understand that there is a method to your madness when it comes to that stuff. Because nine times out of 10, it works. Nine times out of 10, we're not in this thing to, um, just go on the wayside when we post something we want people to watch it and so i have to be reminded that often i think that i have like i was saying a rebellious nature when it comes to algorithm and playing that game whereas i think you just understand it a lot more um and we can find the middle ground where it's not like cringy and when it's like oh no this works you get yes, what i'm saying yes very good speech um, but i think people i think people one thing that i always see under your post is your ability to uh, make ads and content that is uh, paid for engaging and not feel so corny. You know what I mean? I think that it's a testament to your writing, you know, a testament to the, your ability to make story or storytelling really is, is where, it, where it stems from, which I think is sexy because if you can't tell a good story, actually, 
last night, <laughs> you <laughs> you are such a fetish when it comes to storytelling that we were in bed and we were about to have sex, and you said, "Tell me a sexy story," and I just was like. <sighs> Why can't we just get in the moment and do this? That thing? is getting in the moment. <laughs> okay. That I, is. It's painting a picture. It's creating it's a vibe. So, it's yeah, playing yeah. with fantasy. It's delighting in the unknown. It's playing in reality. It's playing with fire. Yeah. It's all of those things. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's sensitive and it's also a little bit painful and yeah. it's tender. And it's new. Well, this is why you're great at storytelling and I'm great at shooting you. And then we just. We meet in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> we do great together. I just wanted to give you your flowers, too, and say, like, um, I mean, at the end of the day, I wear the Jared choker. Mm. I wore it in a very big project. Yeah. Once in a lifetime big, career changing big. I'm just put it out there. Project is coming out in February. And I wore my Jared choker in it. And one of the producers asked me, they were like, I like the choker, but like, why? And I was like, whenever you look at me you really should see my husband like he should be credited like who I am the confidence I have how I'm able to show up in the work that I do and how far I've come is to the credit of my husband so I wear that so that even if you're not on camera with me or you're not visible people know that your presence is still there hmm that's hot that's sexy where's my shan tattoo it's coming. I, you gotta, you gotta uh, set up, find me a tattoo artist. Okay. It's been in the works. I did find you a tattoo artist. The girl, right? Yeah. Yeah, she's like too popping. I don't think you tried at all. Don't you? Don't think you messaged her. No. I did talk to her. This was years ago. Okay. <laughs> years ago, but she and when I talked to her, she was like, "Yeah, I got like a two two year wait right now, but I can fit you in." Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's been two years, so if you would have <laughs> just gotten on that wait list, yeah, would have had that uh, covered off. I think in general, just to speak to that point, like I came to you recently on a personal note mm. to be like, I just need you to guide me with this. Mm. Like, I need you to hold my hand and like take me through this experience because I, I just can't do it alone. Mm. And I think I've been subtly looking for your help and guidance, mm. but I need to be clear and direct about that. Mm. I think as we go, I mean, I intuitively kind of know, like I know it has to be me, who books your appointment for your allergist. Yeah. I know that you have to get that done. You're not going to get it done. It should be on me. So I think that, you know, that's also part of the sharpening of us. It's how we work together that bleeds over into our personal life. And sometimes what I know about you in a work relationship, I might begrudgingly not want to apply when yeah. we're together. And I, I have to understand, like, where your strengths lie, where my strengths lie. Yeah. And I think that, that there's something beautiful about knowing that and not being resentful. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's like, it's, I think now at the age that we are at, there's only, I don't know how much more I'm going to probably change. This is probably who I am for, for a while. I might get better and more skillful. Um, but setting my appointments, I'm probably, it's probably not going to happen. Yeah. You know, I'm going to need someone to help with that. Um, but I can guarantee that when it comes to facilitating the shooting and growing in that department, it's always going to continue to grow. Um, well, to end things <clears throat> off, speaking of growth, what vision do you want to hold? Uh, for what us? moment do you want to celebrate right now for where we're at? Like, where do you, what do you want to pause and just say, like, look at this, this is cool, and then take a breath, and then what vision do you want to hold? Um, I, I think that the thing that I want to celebrate is that we have made it to a space where I think we can compete with other, other production companies. Um, I think that we've shown and proved that, um, and that we've assigned or assembled an Avengers team to be able to produce all of, all the things from smaller content all the way up to really big projects. Um, and we have people that believe in what we're doing and believe in what we're trying to do. And we have companies who believe in what we're trying to do as a production team, not just as talent. Um, we got an email the other day. I was like, hey, I would love to talk to you guys about doing content that may not even be starring you guys, which is, I think, a testament to the growth that we set for the beginning of the year of 
we want to make content that competes with other productions. Um, and so let's celebrate that. I think that is a cheers moment. I think that is like a, a moment of, of, it's a huge win uh, for us, um, not only as a couple, but as a production, a production team. And then I think the vision that I want to hold, and I've been saying this for a long time, is like, I want to figure out a way to get into the commercial space. I think that we make many commercials right now. I think that we could really make a splash in the world of commercials. And I love that you had that vision and your course that you're taking from your favorite commercial director yeah. starts on the 30th. Yeah. So I love that you have that vision and you're working towards it. That's like when you said like, at this age, I'm probably not gonna change a lot. I reject that. You've always yeah. evolved so rapidly. You've always embraced change. You've always embraced growth. It's, it's the quality that made me marry you or made me look at you like, I want this to be my life partner. So I think that that's, it's cool that you have that vision and I know that you put steps behind it. I, on that note of assembling the Avengers team, we now have two full-time employees. Yeah. When we talked, I think, on, in this way, we didn't have any at the time. We were just starting them. And a big question we had in our minds is, because we've learned to work together and we focused on this relationship, and there's intimacy that's involved in that, and there's after-hours work communication that's involved in that, we were weary that we couldn't translate that to employees mm -hmm. because in the past we haven't done that successfully mm -hmm. so we were like i just we know that this is a weakness of ours yeah um and i think that we've gotten better at that yeah i'm sure we could call claudine down right now and she could tell us where we can improve still but yeah i feel like we have done a really good job compensating people well celebrating people making space for other people um and communicating much better to create a team environment where everybody feels like their vision is understood and that their skill set is respected. Yeah, respected and that there's growth. Yeah. Um, and so, um, you know, I think that's the one thing that I, I do hope for everybody that does ever work with us or work for us. I think that there's like a, a, a position of, hey, this is a boutique company that has big dreams and whatever you dream of for yourself in this space of production can be achieved and that, that there, there's just an infinite growth in this company yeah we started off together mm. in a one-bedroom apartment where our living room was our studio our yeah. bedroom was our office and we expanded to that two-bedroom expanded to getting to that house that we rented you know, bought this house, created a, a genuine working environment and a separation between our work life and our home life. And hopefully this time next year, we've moved out of the home and we've got something, you know, bigger and we continue to expand. And that's really exciting to me. Yeah. And, and you know, we, the one thing that I always commend is that you always know what is missing and you run towards that. Um, and that's something that I, try to learn from you or try to try to gain from you i think for me a lot of times i'm always looking at the this right now um whereas i feel like you're always like what's missing um and so that to me is what allows growth in our company it also makes me a giant complainer yes yes <laughs> it does <laughs> it does <laughs> but i'm glad you see the positive <laughs> and that's why you can't leave <laughs> good cool what's up uh popping in real quick to give a shout out to the sponsor of this video here squarespace now squarespace that platform quite literally keeps this channel up and running squarespace is more than just a website builder it's your partner in creativity and business growth with designed intelligence you can craft a personalized website that truly represents your brand i mean it's like having a design team at your fingertips and let's talk about business. Squarespace Payments makes managing transactions easy with flexible payment options for your customers. I mean, nobody likes to get to the payment option and have to go through a whole bunch of stuff that they're not familiar with. We built Shan's website on Squarespace, and let me tell you guys, it was a game changer because we were able to customize it from the SEO tools to flexible payment options to design intelligence to Fluid Engine. I'm telling you, it is all here, and I am no coder, so we were able to customize Shan's website to a T 
So are you ready to start your Squarespace website journey? Go to squarespace.com and go get that free trial. Go play around and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash shambooty to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Trust me, it's worth it.